Good morning, champions. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of the strong and courageous. Today, God is calling out strength and courage in us because it is easy to feel overwhelmed by the task that our text will be setting out before us. So say this to yourself. I am strong. Mm -mm. I am courageous. God is always with me. Say it this time and mean it. When I'm done, you'll understand why God is calling out strength from you. Calling out strength in you, reminding you that you are strong, you are courageous. And so you can do what I say you can do. Say it again. I am strong. I am courageous. God is always with me. Let's go to where we have been. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. We've been on our series on begotten of love. And we got to verse 7 of 1 Corinthians, which God has been using to, 1 Corinthians 13, which God has been using to explain to us what he means when he says love one another. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Our interest today is in the deep part, endures all things. NIV says, Love always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. That's our focus. Love always perseveres. Perseverance, when you look at the new Oxford Dictionary, has to do with persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. So the Greek word, translated here in NIV as love perseveres or in NKJV as endures is actually hupo meno we've been handling meno so you will recognize that one this word is usually employed in the military to describe an army holding position holding a vital position at all costs against assault it is a compound word made by combining the word hupo, which means under, and meno, which means to abide, to remain, to stay. So literally, the word that NIV calls persevere, or King James calls endures, hupo meno literally means to remain under, to abide under, to stay under, And it communicates the idea of holding up under trial, holding up under difficulties, persevering in spite of difficulties, of abiding under, not simply with a passive, patient resignation, but with a vibrant hope that conquers and transmutes situations. Now, a person who is said to love this way, a person whose love always perseveres, a person whose love always endures, a person whose love never gives up, a person whose love never quits, depending on your translation, is therefore somebody who is trusted to willingly hold the battle lines and remain under difficult circumstances for the sake of securing victory for another person. This is why God called out courage and strength in you because this is not a call for the faint hearted and this is not a task, a commission for the easily wearied. A quick clarification before we run. For those of us Bible students, you could remember that in 1 Corinthians 13.4 it says love is patient and now in 7D it says love is enduring. You may be tempted to think love is patient and love is enduring. It's repetition but it's not. There are two different words used in describing patience and in describing enduring. I won't go into the words, mainly because I can't even pronounce the first one. <laughs> okay, but patience has to do with your response towards people. Enduring the fault and even the provocations of others without retaliating. So when he says love is patience, he's talking about your patience towards people. And in seven, he says love is enduring. He's talking about 
your response towards circumstances. It denotes perseverance in the face of difficulties. So what would we say is a persevering love? Is a love that never gives up? Is a love that perseveres? This is a love that is intentional. It will cost you effort. It's a love that is sacrificial. It's a love that is costly. In short, it is that one word we don't want to hear about. It is an unconditional love. Meaning you love me in spite and despite and irrespective of what I do or who I am or who I become. This is a love that is loyal and holds out, that goes beyond mere patience because it is tied to a hope that is alive. When enduring all things, this word can also be directed towards God. So when it's directed towards God, it, it describes the idea of waiting on God, of cleaving to God, of expecting from God. However, when you turn that same enduring all things towards the world, it carries the idea of standing fast against hostile attacks, remaining firm without weakening, persevering and defying evil in the battles of life. And how many of us sitting down here are not fighting battles? Battles of hatred, of loneliness, battles that you walk into a place and you are persecuted for no just cause. For every single good thing you do, then bad things come back in return. This is God using Paul to call us to the place of standing firm against that battle. And not fighting back hatred with hatred, evil with evil, anger with anger, but coming with the persevering love of God. This is a love that does not know how to quit. It does not know how to surrender to defeat. It does not know how to give up. It is a love that remains steadfast in the face of unpleasant circumstances. It is a love, it's the kind of love you find in the midst of adversity. Today's text is calling you and I, it's calling us to persevere, to be tenacious in all circumstances. It is asking us to lean into the one word the world does not want to hear, endurance, in difficulty. It is hard to be loving when you are in pain. These are the battles you have to stand to fight with love. It is hard to be loving when you are suffering unjustly. When you are de de deprived, love is the last thing that you want to give. When you are hated for no just cause, it is hard to be loving. When you are experiencing losses or when you are lonely, these are some of the difficult situations that life throws at us. This, but these are also seasons that demands, that places demand on the nature of God in us, on the spirit of Christ in us. Say, I've given you the spirit of love, the spirit of power, the spirit of a sound mind. That spirit is not, there's no demand on that spirit when you meet me and I'm always nice. Demand is placed on that spirit when you say good morning and I, if I, and I embarrass your entire family line. And you are looking at me and wondering, where did that come from? We have been begotten of love to be men and women whose love for one another never gives up but stands firm without weakening in the face of pain, in the face of suffering, in the face of deprivation, in the face of hatred, in the, in the face of accusation, in the face of allegations, in the face of losses, in the face of loneliness. I say it again, this is not a call for the faint-hearted. It's not a call for the easily weary. That's why God asked me to name this assembly the assembly of the strong and the courageous. Jesus is our perfect model of enduring love. Even on the way to the cross, he was still loving us. On the cross, with us crucifying him, he was still loving us. And today, Despite saying yes, and we will say no a million times, we know that when we wake up tomorrow, he will still love us. This is how you and I have been called to love. So when the Apostle Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write, love endures all things, he was making a two-dimensional call to the church. First, let your enduring love for God cause you to wait on him, to cleave to him. To stand firm on his word and know that he will come, th come through. And second, have an unconditional love for your fellow man. Don't wait for the perfect circumstances. 
if he greets me, probably. If he treats me well, maybe. No, don't wait for the perfect reasons. Don't wait for circumstances to align. Love people the way Christ loves you. Unconditionally. We need strength and courage to love this way. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. For no man, no woman, can by his own might have an enduring love for one another. There is no one under the sun that can by sheer will, by sheer will power persevere in loving another person. It is humanly impossible, I don't know about you, to love somebody who is completely unlovable. But thank God for the spirit of Christ. Thank God for the nature of God in us. So yes, we can love this way if we surrender our hearts. Yes, we can love this way if we surrender our wills. Yes, we can love this way if we surrender our desires. And yes, we can love this way if we persevere. And willingly embrace the death that is so central to love. You cannot truly love without dying to self. Dying to the need to have your own way. You cannot truly love without dying to lust. Dying to the need to want everything for yourself. You cannot truly love, let alone love under difficult circumstances if you are not dead to pride. Dying to the need to be right, the need to appear important. I don't know what your particular battle lines are. I don't know what your situations are. I don't know what your circumstances are, even as you're listening to me. But I, I do know that this is, what, this is what God is calling us as an assembly and as a, as a body of Christ to do. To begin to love men when we are in pain. To love when we are going through adversity. To love when we are being deprived. To love when we are feeling hatred. To love when we are experiencing losses. To love when we are lonely. To love when we are suffering shame. The love with which God loves us is unconditional. The love you and I have to love others cannot be conditional. It has to be unconditionally given. For we received it unconditionally. We are called to love unconditionally, to continue to do good without growing weary. To stand courageously in strength and continue in love in spite of difficulties and discouragements. And there will be many. That's why Jesus said, in this world, ye will have, ye have tribulations. He did not say he will not be there. He said, ye have, I like the, the King James. We are begotten of love to persevere in love. The world knows nothing, absolutely nothing about this love. This love that endures all things. The love the world tells you if you've done your best, to move on. So you cannot look to the world, you're not going to get it. You're not going to manifest the nature that you have been given. You cannot look to the world for encouragement. It does not understand this love. It's going to label you a fool. So this is not a call to endure endurance for the sake of endure, enduring sake. This is a call, this is not a call to live in denial, to ignore what happened, to erase the past and brush off the emotional hurts and pain. But this is a call to look to Jesus, our source and supply of this love. This is a call to, a call to hold on to hope and to never give up on people regardless of what they do, regardless of what you've invested, regardless of what they will do tomorrow. It is not something any of us can do by our strengths. So as we rise today and make our confessions, we're going to end up in prayer asking God, help us to manifest this love, awaken the strength and the courage to be tenacious, to stand and look the world in the eye and say, yes, I will love this person because Christ loves me. Yes, I can still look back because despite all the times I've offended God, he still looks back and picks me up. Yes, I can manifest a love that perseveres in every circumstance. And yes, like the Jesus who lives in me, I can love another to the end. Let's rise for our confessions this morning. Say with me, I am begotten of love to abide in love. The love of God in me endures all things and never quits. 
I am called to love all men, including those who do not deserve it. Say it like you mean it. I will keep on doing good without growing weary. And I will run with endurance the race set before me. I am rooted and built up in Christ Jesus. The love of God is mightily at work in me. I am a dependable roof for the people in my sphere. I protect, cover, and guard them from neg negative exposures and harm. I am a safe place of shelter. God uses me to provide refuge to others. The love of God in me never quits, never gives up, and never surrenders to defeat. I am strong and courageous. The love of God in me is persevering because God is always with me. I can love another person no matter what. I am a difference maker. I will not be afraid, neither will I lose heart in crisis. I am a person of honor. I will not walk away from commitment even when it costs me. I choose daily to remain under the government of love and to intentionally love the unlovable. I am begotten of love to persevere in love. I remain steadfast under trial. I am a creator of love. I am called to do everything in love. The love of God in me is alive in the midst of adversities. I love because Christ first loved me. I am strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus to endure all things and I hold fast to love and justice while I wait continually for my God. I am abiding daily in Christ Jesus. His love flows through me to others. Just want you to raise your hands and ask God for the grace to abide daily in his love. That in abiding we may be able to reflect his love to our world. To reflect his love to our spheres. I don't know the battle lines that you have been called to hold. I don't know the people you have around you that loving them has proved impossible. I don't know your own battle lines, your own unique circumstances, your own situation. But God is calling us to love the way he loves us. So say, Lord, empower me by your spirit to love at all times. Keep your love alive in me in the midst of adversities. Let your love find unhindered expression in me. Awaken me to your love. Cause me to die to self, to die to pride, to die to lust. And when heaven looks down, they will find one who is patterned and aligned after Christ. So let Christ be seen in me. Let Christ be heard in me. Let Christ be experienced in me. Let the people around me testify that they share space with one who is the Christ on earth.